Hello everyone, I'm Char. I'm a top level competitive player, and today I want to go over the best and worst weapon of every class in Splatoon 2. This will apply to both solo ranked and a team environment. But regardless of what weapon class you play, I'm here to tell you what your best and worst options are. There will be timestamps in the description, so if you're looking to jump to any specific weapon class, you can check it out there, and just to note, I'm splitting the shooters from semi-autos, short range, and long range. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to subscribe for more content, and let me know your guys' list for the best and worst weapons of every class. And without further ado, let's get started with the video. First up, for the best short range shooter, we have the NZAP 85. Shocking. I'm sure nobody saw this one coming whatsoever. But in all seriousness, NZAP absolutely tops both competitive usage rates and solo queue usage rates. And the reason is really just because it's an all rounder supportive aggressive hybrid. Zap really doesn't have any major weaknesses. It has a solid kill time, good painting power, exceptional mobility, and a great kit. Suction Bomb is one of the best subs in the entire game, and its ability to force people to move or wall out areas is really useful, as well as providing a good amount of painting power and damage. Ink Armor, while a bit less useful in a non-coordinated environment, the higher up you go in solo queue, and especially in team play, the better Ink Armor will get, as it is the best special in the game at a higher level of play. It's still really useful for giving yourself some extra HP, and gives you the opportunity to play more aggressively, so when you need to make the game saving plays in solo queue, you have an opportunity to help make them. NZAP is just a weapon that doesn't have a lot of big weaknesses, and has plenty of strengths to abuse, allowing you to contribute in any type of match. I'd also like to give the Kensa 52 gal a special mention for shooters, as while I don't believe it's better than the Zap, its wall and booyah bomb gives it two survivability options, which allows it to play incredibly aggressively while staying alive for a long period of time. It also has a great kill time. Outside of that, it's a bit worse in most aspects than the Zap in terms of a little bit less paint, a little bit less mobility, etc. But it's still a great weapon, and I had to give it a mention considering that only 3100 to ever be reached was done with that weapon. For worse of the short range shooters, we have the vanilla sploosh o -matic. Now, the sploosh is an alright main weapon. It doesn't have a lot of range, but its kill power is still pretty good, and it has a decent amount of paint. But where the problems start is this regular kit. The curling bomb is an incredibly predictable approach option, which, once you learn, is really easy to notice the sploosh is normally following it. And without a curling bomb, sploosh struggles to close the gap a lot and doesn't have any tools for long distance pressure like the sploosh 7 has with its bomb, so it can really struggle in that department. And in addition to the bad news of its kit, it has Splashdown, which is the worst special in the entire game. Because this special always travels the exact same distance up in the air, it's possible to just learn and punish it with almost every weapon pretty much every time which means Splashdown is basically a death sentence in most situations and incredibly situational. So the sploosh matic really just has a hard time with its kit, and it leaves it with a very linear and predictable playstyle. If you do want to play the sploosh, the sploosh 7 has a significantly better kit, as it has Hammer, which is an actual special weapon that's useful, especially in Rainmaker, and the Splat Bomb gives it a poking option it can use at a distance, which makes it a much better weapon. For long range shooters, we have the Custom Jet Sculpture, which is proof that a great kit can absolutely improve a weapon's placement. The Custom Jet is a pretty solid long range option, being able to poke people at a distance with a good amount of range, having a decent kill time, and a great shot speed. But what really makes this weapon great is the kit. Burst Bombs gives it so much utility that it can be used for close range for maneuverability, damage, finishing people off, helping with kill time, you name it, Burst Bomb can help the weapon do it. Additionally, the weapon is the fastest at charging Stingray in the entire game, which is perfect for stalling the objective, particularly in Tower Control and Rainmaker. Stingray is definitely a difficult special to get used to, but if you manage to learn it, it is also one of the better ones, especially in solo queue, so it is incredibly worth learning. Custom Jet is overall a very versatile backline option, with good pressure on the objective and the ability to adapt at a moment's notice with the pace of the match. The worst long range shooter is the 96 Deco, and this was a hard one to pick, mostly because all of the long range shooters are pretty solid, there's none that are really that bad. But the 96 Deco just has an issue of being outclassed by other options. Primarily, the Gluga Deco has the same kind of niche with a kill time that's relatively fast, a good amount of range, and a wall. But rather than having Splashdown, it has Baller, which is a lot better. Gluga Deco doesn't have as much paint compared to the 96, but it has a faster kill time and dodge rolls, which are pretty useful. If 96 Deco had anything other than Splashdown, it would probably be a lot higher on this list, but unfortunately the Splashdown means that as you're walling out and controlling space, you're not really going to be building a very useful special for yourself or your team, which puts it in just a bit of an uncomfortable situation. Luckily the vanilla 96 is still a really nice alternative and a good support, especially on longer range maps. 
Next up is the semi-automatics with the H3D being the best one. The semi-automatics are all really good weapons, so it's another difficult one to pick from. But the H3 has a ton of potential. Having a one-shot burst is incredibly strong with good mid-range painting capabilities and an amazing kit being the exact same one as MZAP just with a bit more expensive armor. However, with main power of damage to make the one burst more reliable in a lot of situations and better mid-range painting, H3 has plenty of reasons to be used over MZAP and is another great weapon to use to climb the ladder. It has a ton of potential with its ability to take fights, especially if you have a great amount of aim, and the main weakness it has is more its end lag after its shots, which is the weapon's main weakness. Still, it's an incredibly strong option that has a ton of potential for both aggressive and supportive play, but definitely a more mid-range option when compared to the MSAP. I also want to give a shout out to the Foil Squeezer, which is basically a K-Pro on steroids minus the main power-up. It's an amazing option, and it just barely missed being ranked above the H3. And right after talking about how good Squeezer is, we have the worst semi-automatic, the Vanilla Squeezer. While the Foil Squeezer has an absolutely amazing kit, Vanilla Squeezer is much more situational. Wall is okay, but it doesn't benefit from the fact that Squeezer is a rather ink hungry weapon, which means it can't take as much advantage of the wall as other weapons can. But the main thing that holds us back is Stingray. Stingray is a great option for long range weapons. However, Mid-range and short-range weapons aren't very good with the special due to the fact that they have to leave their effective range and back up to use Ray, then go back into the position they want to be in, which is especially important for V-Squeezer. Still, all of the semi-automatics are good, so even Squeezer is nice for some longer-range maps on Tower Control and Rainmaker, so it's not even really that bad in the first place. It's still an amazing main weapon that has its uses. Next up is Blasters, and with easily the best main weapon out of all of them, we have the Kensa Rapid. Rapid has a good ability to remove armor, pressure behind corners, and a lot of range without being too laggy, which means it's one of the best ones for spacing and walling opponents out. The Kensa Rapid comes with Torpedo, which is the best sub for Rapid in the entire game outside of Burst Bomb, which will never be given to a Rapid, I'm almost certain. Basically, Torpedo gives you combo potential, the ability to poke weapons outside of your range, and overall an incredibly useful sub. While Baller isn't the best thing for the weapon, it gives it some survivability and allows it to have a more aggressive playstyle, since you can go in, try to get a pick, and use the Baller to escape safely, and use it on the objective to help with the zone. Rapid overall just has a lot of pressure and killing power, giving it a lot of solid matchups, and is one of the best weapons in the game at fighting damage up midline weapons. I would also like to note that the Rapid Pro Deco is a pretty solid option. While the main weapon is a bit weaker, the sub isn't entirely useless as wall could be nice in some situations, the bit of range is nice for some maps, and most importantly, a bit of ink armor can always help. While the Kensa Rapid is slightly better, and especially in solo queue has more carry potential, the Rapid Pro Deco is another really solid kit and slightly different main weapon. And for the worst blaster, we have the Luna Neo. Luna is an alright blaster. It has a nice blast radius, not too much jump spread, and of course it still has that one hit direct. But the weapon really struggles at closing the gap at times, as there are better shorter range options like tri Saucer and Octobrush in the game currently. However, Luna Neo doesn't just have issues with the main weapon, it has problems with its kit. This weapon was given Ink Mine, which is basically worthless whenever you're trying to push back in, which is when blasters struggle the most since they don't have a lot of paint control. The special of Suction Rush is okay, but it's another more supportive special, rather than something that works aggressively. Suction Rush can be okay on weapons that have a good amount of maneuverability to take advantage of all the bombs going off, but Luna is a little bit laggy since it is a blaster, which means it struggles at taking full advantage of its special. Overall, Luna Neo just has way too many problems to see any form of usage, and the other kits Luna has are significantly better, especially the vanilla Luna having a bomb for helping poking with distance, and a baller for survivability. Next up for the Brellas is the Sorella Brella. The normal Brellas are easily the most versatile of the three, having solid painting capability, a very useful shield with plenty of HP, some of the best matchups in the entire game, the ability to stall fights, and good special output, even at 200p. The weapon has been the top of the meta for most of the game's lifespan, and while it's definitely fallen off a little bit with the damage nerfs, it's still capable of pretty much everything it could do previously. As for the kit, the Sorella Brellas is slightly better because the auto bomb is a lot more useful than Sprinkler with how much Sprinkler has been butchered, and having a bomb in general is a very useful trait. The bomb rush is great not only for refilling your ink tank instantly, which can be useful in some engagements with Brella's poor ink efficiency, but it allows you an opportunity to push up, paint zone, or be aggressive, especially with the objective, which allows Brella to play more aggressively and by itself when needed. 
Though all Brellas benefit from playing in a more coordinated environment, since they're about shielding and distracting opponents in many situations, regular Brella is the most versatile of the three in being able to function aggressively without its team, making it the best of the three Brellas. Worst Brellas goes to Vanilla Undercover. By a landslide. I mean, come on, Nintendo. What were you thinking? This kit doesn't even synergize with itself. Ink Mine is a more passive, defensive option, and Splashdown is an aggressive option. Both of these put on a supportive weapon. While the kit isn't great, the main weapon also has some problems. It really has to be supportive, since its fighting capabilities just aren't that good. Its shield doesn't protect you that much, and its damage is weak. Undercover is able to stall some fights and paint fairly well since it can paint with a bit of protection from things like chargers. However, as an aggressive option, it absolutely falls apart. Mine doesn't do much for it in terms of needing to move forward and is only useful if people are approaching you, something that is incredibly predictable and even then, they can just back up when getting hit by the mine. As for Splashdown, 150p doesn't save it for being the worst special in the game and having no synergy with the main weapon whatsoever. If you really don't want to play supportive, you might as well just play the Sorella Undercover, because at least that has both a bomb and a better special. That can be used for survivability. Vanilla Undercover just doesn't fit for any situation ever. For Sloshers, we have the Soda Slosher. Soda Slosher has a pretty amazing kit to start out with, for a Splat Bomb that can combo exceptionally well with the 70 damage Sloshers. And the special basically turns you into Splat 1 Slosher, but Burst Bombs don't take any of your tank and you can throw a ton of them, which is absolutely insane. Burst Bombs combo amazingly well with this weapon, and having access to two different types of bombs in some situations is an incredibly useful thing that no other weapon really has. For the main weapon itself, it has solid range, unique arc shots that can be used to hit many different angles, and is overall one of the best slayers in the entire game. Its only real big weakness is dealing with shields, as it has a bit of a low DPS, but outside of that, it's a pretty solid weapon overall, and has a great job fighting people, even over ledges. Tri Slosher is a very close second. While it doesn't quite have the range of the Soda Slosher, anything that has less range than Tri probably loses to it in a one-on-one -on -one fight. As for the kit, Burst Bomb and Ink Armor is absolutely exceptional and only on this weapon, giving a great solo carry potential. A really good weapon, especially for ranked or for fighting shorter range team comps. For the worst slosher, we have the Vanilla Machine. Now, all of the sloshers are good main weapons, so the machine is of course still a pretty fine main weapon. It has a nice direct, good angles over ledges, a solid bit of range, etc. However, the problem starts to arise with its kit. Stingray, like with the Vanilla Squeezer, doesn't fit this weapon at all, because you have to back up and get out of your effective range to use the ray, then go back into your effective range. Auto Bomb isn't horrible for the weapon, it's still a pokeable bomb which can be pretty useful for it, though it's not the best aggressive option to help it either, it's just okay. The machine is a solid option, just the worst out of the sloshers. There's just no reason to use it because of Stingray. The other two kits for Machine are both solid. Neo Machine is okay, since Bombers isn't the best aggressive tool, but still works pretty well with it. Sensor is more where it's lackluster. And the Kenzo Machine has the best sub-weapon synergy with the main weapon in the entire game with Fizzy Bomb. Splashdown is pretty lackluster, but Fizzy Bomb is just so good with Machine that it's worth it here. Next up is Splatlings, and for the best Splatling, we have the Gold Nautilus. Nautilus is easily the best main weapon out of the Splatlings due to its insane maneuverability with a charge hold. Unlike chargers with their charge hold, the ability to shoot and then keep the rest of your charge and charge it up gives you a ton of more maneuverability than chargers could ever hope for. You can shoot and then follow your own charge. On top of this, Nautilus has the best shot velocity in the entire game. It's basically the closest thing to hit scan we're ever going to get in Splatoon, which means it's super reliable and easy to track opponents and hit damage, something most Splatlings struggle with a lot. The kit is just more good news, Suction Bomb being one of the best bombs it could ever get, helping with more poking potential and aggressive plays that could be made, and Inkjet, pushing the weapon's aggressive potential to the limit by giving it a way to pressure weapons outside of its range. Nautilus really only struggles slightly with painting capabilities, and even then it's not that bad. It's just a great all-around slaying weapon. Oh boy, V-Hydra! Alright, where do I even begin on this one? The kit on this weapon doesn't work at all. Auto Bomb doesn't fit because when you throw the Auto Bomb, you then have to charge for like six years before you can start firing, which means the Auto Bomb's not really gonna do a whole lot for you. It's okay for poking a little bit, but it's not great. 
Hydra really benefits from having a deployable sub. Stuff like Beacon, Sprinkler, or Ink Mines. Hey look, the sub weapon that's on the custom Hydra. Because it can place those subs and take advantage of it while the main weapon's doing its thing. However, the special is where this weapon absolutely falls apart, as it has Splashdown. A special that's not only one of the weakest in the game, but something that's made for aggressive weapons. Hydra really benefits from being able to charge a special due to the fact that it stays alive for quite a long time. Something like armor, tenna missiles, or ink storm would be really useful for it. And hey look, one of those is on the custom Hydra kit. You see where I'm getting with this? The custom Hydra has a really good kit, and the vanilla Hydra has a kit that not only has no synergy with it, but has the weakest special in the game. There is just no reason to use this thing over its other kit in any situation. Nintendo, please never repeat something like this in the third game. For the best charger, we have the Bamboo. While it may not have as much range as stuff like the E-Leader and Splat Charger, Main Power Up basically gives you a one-shot with a bigger hitbox and a 20-frame charge time as opposed to the Splat Charger's 60 and the E-Leader's 93. It's absolutely insane how fast this weapon can shoot, and it is one of the best weapons at stuffing approaches in the entire game. With good paint as well, and a solid kit that can output a good amount of specials, this weapon can do pretty much anything. It can make the aggressive plays that are needed and be really strong defensively. The only big weakness it has is gear dependency, as you're gonna wanna slap a ton of main power up on that build to give you that one shot. But it is undoubtedly worth the cost to have one of the best weapons in the entire game. Next up for worst charger is the GooTuber, and let's be honest, we all saw this one coming. GooTuber isn't the worst weapon anymore, it's gotten some substantial buffs such as being able to partial charge kill, and having a charge hold that you could basically go in and out of pretty much anywhere. But the weapon still isn't great, it has an abysmally long charge time, those partial charges have a low shot velocity, meaning the shots themselves travel pretty slow, and in general, Swiffer just outclasses it as a more aggressive charger, having good painting capability, a similar amount of range, much better kits, and the ability to charge full speed in the air, which is much more valuable than this charge hold mechanic that GooTuber has. So GooTuber's left in an awkward spot. And well, it's not helped by the fact that it has Splashdown. Suction Bomb is okay. For a charger, it's not the most helpful thing, but it's still a good sub. But Splashdown is just once again, not very useful at all. It doesn't really work super well since even if you land the splashdown, you then have to charge up a shot in order to hit someone, which leaves you incredibly vulnerable. Realistically, the custom GooTuber is just a much better kit, and even that one is outclassed by the Fresh Squiffers kit, which is basically the same thing, but with a better bomb. So GooTuber has an unfortunate fate of just being outclassed by the Squiffer, so it's not really worth running. But hey, at least it's really fun. Dually Squatchers. The Dually where Nintendo just said, forget end lag, we're just gonna give you slides. Unsurprisingly, it's the best one by a landslide. Dually Squatcher just has a ton of different strengths. It has good range, solid painting capability, exceptional mobility, arguably the best rolls out of all the Duallys due to the sliding capabilities, and it can run main power up for a three-shot kill potential. Overall, it's just a really solid jack-of-all-trades weapon that can do pretty much anything. The only real weakness it has is its RNG being pretty mediocre, and the fact that it has negative ink of you, which is why the vanilla Dually Squelcher is better despite having point sensor instead of a bomb. Since it can use its bomb anyway, it's better to have 30 points for special cheaper missiles rather than the 220p ink storm. And for the worst Duallys, we have the Dapple Duallys. And for once, this isn't primarily about the weapon kit. The Dapples have a solid kit. A bomb does help for closing the gap a little bit more, but beacons still have an aggressive niche and allow the weapon to place them and set up when getting behind them. And Bombers is a solid special for retaking and allows the weapon to play more passive in some situations. Not the best kit, but it's a fairly solid one. Definitely not the big problem here. The main weapon is just overall really lackluster. While the kill time can be incredibly fast, a lot of weapons have the benefit of a one hit or really fast kill. So it's nothing special in that regard. Its painting power is incredibly mediocre. Its range is one of if not the worst in the game and its dodge rolls, while very fast, go practically nowhere. The main weapon overall is just quite weak. In a more short-range meta, Dapples might not struggle as hard, but in the current state of things, they really do. Main power up weapons absolutely shred it because rolling through ink will often make you one-shot, and again, you have pathetically little range. All of this isn't helped by the fact that most of the weapons in the meta are great at walling out short range, especially with main power up killing you and your dodge rolls very easily since you go through enemy ink. Dapple just has a really hard time fighting the more common weapons in the game right now. Sorry, Dapple players. 
but your weapon really needs some buffs. For best rollers, we have the Carbon Roller. While the horizontal flick is mediocre, the vertical flick has a solid killing range, is great under ledges, and is incredibly quick. But on top of that, the Carbon Roller Deco's Burst Bomb absolutely makes this weapon, being able to combo for extra range, better mobility, and it gives it the fastest time to kill someone through armor by comboing a Burst Bomb to break the armor with a flick to kill them afterward. Basically, Carbon has to be respected at close range or under ledges, and even if its one-hit kill range is short, it has the tools to have basically extra range, which is incredibly useful for the weapon. While it does have Auto Bomb Rush, which is definitely not the greatest special, Carbon doesn't get too many specials, and the Burst Bomb plus main weapon combination is so strong that it makes up for it enough to become the best roller. Rollers are another case of none of the main weapons are bad at all, so it's more a battle of what kit is the worst, and Flings a Roller has the worst one with the Splash Wall. I have no idea what they're doing giving wall to a roller. They did this in the first game too, and it doesn't make any more sense in this game. Its only real use is maybe protecting you when you use your Bomb Rush, but Flingza is a more ink-hungry weapon, which means it can't really get as much value out of its wall. It doesn't have much long-range killing power to play off of, and it doesn't really help the horizontal flick or aggressive play is whatsoever. Bomb Rush is fine, but when you're comparing it to a 180p missile, it's just never going to be the better kit. It just doesn't really synergize super well together. It's not horrible, but the Foil Flingza is just significantly better having a poking bomb and a much better special that complements the weapon's playstyle. Finally, we have the Brushes, which had a pretty close battle between the Inkbrush Nuvo and the Permanent Inkbrush for the best kit, as the Inkbrush main weapon is incredibly solid. It's fast, able to get behind and distract people, paints really well, and has a solid kill time. However, currently, the Perma Brush is just a little bit better. While Sprinkler is a little bit lackluster, so is Ink Mine, and while Ink Mine would get the slight edge in the subcategory, there is absolutely no doubt that Perma Brush has one of the fastest and best armors in the game. Now, a lot of armor weapons are forced into a more passive playstyle, but Permabrush is able to get a lot of armors even when dying and going infrequently, which means it has a really good niche for being able to be aggressive with its armor while still providing ample support to its team. Permabrush still paints fairly effectively, and Sprinkler at least a little bit helps with that, and the weapon can still play very distract heavy as the armor can help keep itself alive. Overall, it's a great tool for harassing your opponents and especially thrives in a team-based environment. And for the worst brush, we have the Vanilla Kit. Now, this was pretty close, as Octobrush is a rather lackluster main weapon the higher up you get, as its main advantage of a bigger hitbox kind of gets taken away, and positioning becomes incredibly difficult once you fight opponents who are very aware. However, I do believe that Octobrush is still a fairly solid weapon in the right hands, and its kits have solid potential. Plus, it's still great for rank until around X2500, so I can't knock it there. The Vanilla Ink Brush, while sharing the same great main weapon, overall has a way worse kit with, once again, Splashdown being the main culprit for this weapon's low placement. This Ink Brush does have a 150p Splashdown, but it doesn't really matter too much. The main reason to use this kit over the other two is the usefulness of the Splat Bomb, which, while great, isn't really enough to make it see use over having an armor or a baller in any means. So, while it's a decent weapon, especially in Rainmaker for the bomb niche that I mentioned earlier, it's overall still the worst of the brushes by a slight degree. And there you have it. Those are my best and worst weapons in each class. Well, it seems game balance is overall in a pretty good spot right now, and a lot of the weaker weapons either have a kit that's better, that makes them work, or isn't even that bad a main weapon. So, at the end of the day, nothing's really super bad in this game, and that's pretty cool. So, the game's in a pretty good spot right now, and really, you should play what weapon you enjoy. Thank you all so much for watching. You can be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content from me, and have a great day.